Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you are doing well and spending some quality time for amazing exam preparations. So in this video, we will discuss one of the important question asking area in cardiovascular system that is cardiac time unit. I have found that students usually find uh, some confusions related to the signs and symptoms of this particular topic. That's why I thought it's very important to discuss the topic in with a brief explanation and we'll go to the questions. So shall we start with the topic? Uh, moreover that I would like to inform you we have been discussing uh, many important topics and questions in the previous videos. If you are a person first watching these videos, I would recommend to watch the previous videos that we have discussed. So definitely that will help to tackle your exams questions. Okay, let us start. What do you mean by cardiac tamp unit? When we will listen these words, we know that this is related to the cardiac system. But we might have a, a little bit of confusion. What is the meaning of the tamp unit? This cardiac tamp unit, it will uh, usually it will develop from some of the other cardiac problems, especially the pericardial effusion. We know that the pericardium is the protective layer of the heart. So when the fluid will filled between the parietal and visceral layer of the pericardium, that is called pericardial effusion. So when the large quantity of or the large volume of fluid filled in this particular cavity, that will leads to cardiac tamponade. How? Because in this situation, the heart is compressed because of the large amount of fluid inside the pericardium. As a result, the cardiac output will decrease because the heart couldn't be able to work properly because it's constructed or it is compressed by the fluid in the pericardium itself. So once the cardiac output will decrease, we know that in this picture you can see in the left ventricular cavity, the space in the ventricle is decreased because that is compressing. And the same time, the client has some common signs and symptoms. That is the one we should study carefully and thoroughly. Because when the question scenario will present, we can see some of these signs. And when we will see these signs, we can suspect, okay, this question or the client is uh, showing something related to a complication as a complication of cardiac tamponade. So, We'll see what are the signs and symptoms. The main signs and symptoms of cardiac tamponade we will call together as Bex triad. What are the things they are in Bex triad? The first one is the hypotension in which the narrowed pulse pressure. And the next one is the distended jugular vein. Then the third one is the muffled heart sounds or the distant muffled heart tones. So these three signs togetherly we call it as Bex triad. That is the classic sign of cardiac tamponade. So when you will see a question and the scenario will present with some of the symptoms and also they will tell the client uh, is uh, diagnosed uh, with a cardiac failure or pericardial effusion, something like that. Like that. So based on that particular scenario, based on the options, you can identify, okay, uh, this is cardiac tamponade or this is a complication of pericardial effusion. And some of the other signs and symptoms includes pulses paradoxes, dyspnea, tachypnea and tachycardia. So I hope the signs and symptoms and what is the meaning of cardiac tamponade is clear to you. I don't want to give a very elaborate explanation because I know most of you have an idea and at the same time before going to a question we should have a brief explanation that will help us to brush up our ideas. Then what are the main interventions? Okay, now you understand the client is a case or diagnosed with the cardiac tumult. So what is the immediate intervention that you have to carry it out? So, the doctor will come and they will prepare them because it is a life-threatening complication. It is a life-threatening condition. So immediately prepare the client for pericardiosynthesis. What do you mean by pericardiosynthesis? It is an insertion of a needle into the pericardial sac to remove the excess fluid. Once the fluid will remove, the pericardial layer will constrict and at the same time the heart will get enough space to work properly or contract properly. The compression will decrease. So that is happening. 
Then another intervention is like place the client in a critical care unit as prescribed. Then administer IV fluids as orders. Then monitor for recurrence of tamponade following pericardial synthesis. Once we conduct or once the client undergone pericardial synthesis also we should monitor the client because there is a chance of recurrent infection. That is very important. So these are the things related to pericardial effusion and the cardiac tamponade. I hope it's clear to you. Then now we will move to one question so that will be more clear. A client with a suspected moderate to large pericardial effusion is admitted for monitoring. If the nurse performs a head to toe assessment, which of these findings indicate likely cardiac tamponade and require immediate intervention? Select all that apply. First itself, I will tell it is a select all that apply question. And the question I will just revert directly. They will ask what are the signs and symptoms of cardiac tamponade? Or out of the options given, what are the symptoms likely shows the client have cardiac tamponade? That is directly they ask. So once we know the client have this, and these are the signs and symptoms. Definitely we know that client require immediate intervention, assessment, and for the management. So we'll see the options one by one. The first option is blood pressure of 90 bar 70 mm of Hg. Then the second one, bounding peripheral pulses. Then the third one, decreased breath sounds on left side. Then the fourth one, distant heart tones. Then the fifth one, jugular venous distension. I hope some of you already got the answer because just now we discussed what are the main signs and uh, what are the things happening once the client have cardiac tamponade. So we'll see the options one. The first one says blood pressure of 97 bar 70 mm of Hg. Okay, this is a hypotension. And also we know that it is a narrow pulse pressure. So that is the correct answer. If we will see a symptom, we know that, okay, this indicates likely a cardiac tamponade. Next one, bounding peripheral pulse. What do you think? Does the cardiac tamponade client have bounding peripheral pulse or weak or threaded pulse? What do you think? Yes, if the cardiac tamponade client, they have a very weak and threaded pulse. Why? Because the cardiac output decrease and the same time the hypotension. So we couldn't expect the, this client have a bounding pulse. That usually uh, present with uh, over high, cardiac overload and the hypertension. So option two we can eliminate. Now what is the next option? Decreased breath sounds on the left side of the heart. So what do you think? Usually this decreased breath sounds we will see in some conditions like pneumothorax, atelectasis, uh, uh, like after some surgery client may develop atelectasis, then like pleural effusion. These are the uh, situation usually uh, indicate with the uh, left side uh, diminished breath sounds. And so that one should not be a, a good sign or the sign which indicate cardiac tamponade. So we can eliminate option 2 and option 3. Now we will move it to the option 4. Distant heart tones. Yes, that is the correct answer. We studied that the muffled heart sounds or the distant muffled heart sound. That is one of the sign which is inside the Beck's triad. The common sign of cardiac tamponade. Then the last option, jugular venous distension. Yes, jugular venous distension also one of the uh, signs of cardiac tamponade that we call that Bex triads, one of the symptoms in Bex triads. So our answers are first option one, blood pressure of 90 uh, bar 70 mm of Hg. Then option four, distant heart tones. And the options five, jugular venous distension. So I hope this is clear. In this slide you can see why it's coming and what are the other symptoms that we have already discussed. So please. Uh, review the questions more and try to uh, repeat uh, listen this uh, videos and uh, add another videos related to these topics again and again so the particular topic will be thorough in your mind 
so you will not forget and also you will not get much confusion when you will see a topic related to this the same cardiac terminus question they will present you with some other topic related to heart failure and some of other clients those who have a decommensated heart failure or exacerbation of heart failure some other problems related to the heart so if you know clear about the symptoms and how a client will present with this particular symptoms what are the complaints they will tell about admission it will be easy for you to find the correct answer so by for now we'll come with more questions on the coming videos bye